Hey guys, hi and welcome to the video. This is lab number two where we are essentially gonna explore the retry part of a uh, state machine. So here in this lab, I'm gonna be showing you how you can add a retry plot on the state machine. Before that, we'll understand why we do we even need that, okay? So let me share my screen. So in the lab one, uh, remember all the labs uh, code is given, right? So if you head over to the GitHub, everything is given with tutorials and links, okay? So now when you're firing one Lambda function and suppose this Lambda fails, right? You wanna retry after X amount of time, right? So all that stuff you could define in the state machine when you have complex states, you could easily add retry logic. Now it becomes very, very easy. So for example, now uh, continuing the example from the lab number one that we did hello world. So here you are saying a comment block. I'm just giving a comment to a particular state machine. Uh, st start at, I'm saying where the state machine sh should start. I'm saying that I have a state called state one. And here I'm defining my state, right? And now, as you can see in this, I'm defining my entity called type as task, which means I want to fire a Lambda function. And end as true, which means there is no next state after this, okay? Just for uh, uh, learning purposes. Now here we can add every state can have a retry block, okay? So now we'll read a little bit what Amazon says and then we'll explore the code that I have. Task and parallel states can have field name retry whose value must be an array of object known as retries. An individual retry represents a certain number of retries usually at increasing time interval. Because think about it, if something failed, you might wanna just try after a particular time interval. You could do all that uh, very easily here, okay? So there are a couple of blocks here, as you can see. The first thing that I would like to show you is the interval. So uh, this is an optional field. Uh, or let's go from here, error equals. This is a required field. A non-empty array of string uh, that can match the error names when a state reports an error step functions can scan through the uh, scan, scan through the retriers when the error name appears in the array it implements the retry policy describes in the retrier so you could say hey whenever let's say in your python code you said raise exception my custom error so you could search for that word so the state machine can look for the word when it errors out and then it can retry based on that interval second is an optional uh, an integer that represents the number of seconds uh, before the first retry attempt, right? Uh, d one by default, interval second has a maximum value of nine, 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 nine. So remember, this is seconds. So if you convert this into minutes, oh, that's a long time that you can uh, retry after. I think that's usually like a month, huh? Is that seconds? Just want to make sure. That's what they claim. Uh, so one by default interval seconds. Yep. So that is seconds. Then you have maximum attempt, which means how many times you want a maximum try. A positive integer that represents the maximum number of retry attempts. Three is by default. If an error occurs more than more, uh, if error occurs more times than specified, the retry ceases. The normal error handling resumes. A value of zero specified that. Uh, error or an error are never retried. Maximum attempts uh, value can be 999. Wow, that's amazing. It can maximum try for that many times. Back off rate, the, uh, the multiplier by which the retry interval increases during each attempt by default is two. So for example, let's say by default is one. So the next time it's gonna try after two, then four and so on. So essentially, as you can see, this example retry makes two retry attempts waiting for three and 4.5 seconds. So yeah, that makes sense. So now uh, let's, um, there are other things also, but we'll take a look at that later. So now understood the theory. Now same thing state, we have a type as task, we resource or retry. And then here we can say, error equals to whatever custom error that your Python returns, right? Interval in seconds, how much interval it should wait, right? Maximum attempts, uh, right, is two. Back off rate is 2.0, you could do that. Again, then I'm saying if a particular task failed, right, I also wanna do a retry, so I'm defining that as well. And then you can also say if anything in general failed. So if this particular state failed, then do a retry, right? So you can define all these settings in a very easy way. So now back to my step functions, um, can click on edit machine and uh, looks like by mistakely I have turned uh, turned my Google Chrome off. So I need to uh, 
go to it again so I'll, I'll try to go once again here so we'll try to go now to step function and remember now that's the beauty right so now i can come here and at the same time i would love to show you something so i want to purposely you know fail this lambda so i'll come here so so that it's gonna retry right after x amount of time so you you could do that right but so now uh come here uh, click on edit and here i can dump my error handling code so now you can see it's gonna invoke my lambda function right uh which is uh over here the hello world and if i want i can manually throttle this lambda so i can click on configuration edit and i'm purposely gonna throttle this so i'm gonna give three seconds so which means the lambda is gonna fail so the state machine should now try after a particular interval by backing off right so start execution and you can click here now you will see now as you can see it's it started trying let me see make sure that this got executed oh i think it got executed that's right yeah that's that got executed so in order to purposely fail uh, what i would want to do is i would uh, concurrency click on that and i will reserve zero concurrency which means the lambda is going to throttle now so coming back and we'll click on start execution so as you can see it's in the blue state right so now it's gonna fail remember because i purposely i'm throttling that lambda so uh, but uh, this will take time because i have a back off time right in my state which means uh, if it's gonna fail then it's gonna try after, it's gonna try for two two more time and it's gonna try after like two seconds and then four seconds respectively as you can see it's still trying right as you can see as you can clearly make out from step input output is not there it's in the blue state which means it's in progress which means it has failed so as you can see now it's doing this uh, retry right uh, it's gonna do one more retry and then it would fail because i am purposely failing that lambda showing you or emulating you the scenario that i was about to show you right so it's gonna try two times now it's gonna back off after two seconds right and of course you can see the logs as well you can see the time period as well and on a high level if you want to come here you can click on lab one and then you should be able to see it's still in the running phase right so it's gonna uh, but eventually it's gonna go to the failed state so this is lab number two uh, which is essentially retry lab number three would be catch block we'll learn how to catch exception and branch off to a new state uh, based on an exception so that's going to be lab number uh four so this is going to be lab three lab four will be essentially uh, catching items uh, from that okay i hope you have enjoyed this tutorials and all i'm asking in return is simply a, a like or and a share to the video that would really help a channel a lot because creating all these contents take a lot of time and effort creating labs tutorial everything takes a lot of time so by the way this just got failed as you can see based on what i said so keep smiling uh, my webcam is still loading <laughs> all right guys keep smiling keep programming i'll see you guys in the lab number fourth that is uh, exception handling okay